Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Appreciate everyone for coming tonight. This great multitude looks so good back through there. Amen. Kind of embarrassing to try to have church anymore. People don't got everything else to do except go to church. But anyway, I'm glad to be here, and I'm like the psalmist. I'm glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I've been there doing this all my life, and I ain't going to change now. Hallelujah. So good to be here. Good to have everyone uh, with us. And I was telling Jeff Gerald he'll have church all by himself. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So good to know uh, the Lord tonight. And so we welcome you to the United Christian Revival tonight. And have the President Paulette Hilton with us tonight and their evangelist, <laughs> Mr. Gerald brother hicks and we appreciate them for being here tonight and trust the lord will uh, just move for us and just give us a blessing that we need certainly need a revival in these days don't we amen i tell you we'll uh, if we'll just uh, let go and let god have his way then he'll do something uh, for us i'm glad that the lord has purposed it amen and he has uh, promised it and he'll perform his will to everyone that will believe and we have to believe doesn't matter how many promises there are if we don't believe them they won't uh, have any effect on us but if we'll believe because Israel uh, didn't enter into the promised land because of their unbelief and so if, if we believe tonight and uh, just yield our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ now I believe he'll give us something Amen to take home with us tonight. I'm glad we're serving the living God, the true God tonight. Amen, the mighty one. He's almighty. He's all sufficient. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. Amen. There's nothing that he cannot do. And I'm glad for what the Lord has done for me and my life for his great salvation. Appreciate his blessings every day of our lives. We're going to stand together and go to prayer at this time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just ask the Lord's blessings on this service tonight. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the privilege we have to come together once again, Lord, and just to uh, come before the throne of grace. Lord, we pray, dear God, that you will give us mercy and grace to help us in the time of our need. Pray, Lord, that you'll lift us up in that heavenly realm tonight, Lord, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that you'll just draw us close to you tonight. God, we pray for every person in this uh, room to, uh, this evening, Lord, and we pray the Spirit of God, Lord, to just touch our hearts and our minds and our lives. Help us to forget about all of our cares and problems and uh, just look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, and we pray that you'll just pour out your Spirit upon us tonight. Help us to receive uh, from heaven tonight, Lord, and we'll be careful to praise you and to love you, to magnify you, for that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I get so thrilled with Jesus every moment of the day. I get so thrilled with Jesus, for he's the truth, the life, the way. I get so thrilled with Jesus, he satisfies my longing soul. I get so thrilled with Jesus, for he's the one who made me whole. I get so thrilled with Jesus every moment of the day. I get so thrilled with Jesus, for he's the truth, the life, the way. I get so thrilled with Jesus, he satisfies my longing soul. I get so thrilled with Jesus, for he's the one who made me whole. Sing it with me. Thrilled with Jesus every moment of the day. I get so thrilled with Jesus, for he's the truth, the life, the way. I get so thrilled with Jesus, he satisfies my longing soul. I get so thrilled 
with Jesus, for he's the one who saved my soul. Well, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Well, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Well, wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me, counselor, prince of peace, mighty God is he, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame wonderful it's my redeemer praise his name well wonderful wonderful jesus is to me counselor prince of peace mighty god is he saving me keeping me from all sin and shame wonderful it's my redeemer praise his name Give the Lord a great big praise offering tonight. If you love him, amen. He's so good to us. Praise the Lord. You may be seated if you'd like to. And uh, since this is a United Christian Revival, Angie's going to come and sing a song for us that says, I'm a Christian. Amen. Praise God. So good to be a Christian in it, to know Jesus. Amen. Well, I remember back before I got saved, all the trouble Satan put in my way, all kinds of heartaches and broken dreams and lots of shameful memories, the life I lived. It was barren and dry and sinful pleasures. Well, they made me cry, but that's all changed now since Jesus moved in. And he changed my life. Now I'm a Christian. I have been redeemed. I am a Christian. I have been set free. All my sins and every evil deed. I've been buried in the deepest sea. He don't remember all the wrongs that I've done. Cause it's been paid for by the blood of his son. Now I'm saved. Sealed and satisfied Cause I've been born again Now neighbor listen To what I have to say If you don't know him In a personal way He wants to save you And change your life Take away the sin and strife If you'll just ask him And acknowledge your sin He will forgive you and give you peace within you'll be converted to a new point of view then with me you can sing now i'm a christian i have been redeemed i am a christian i have been set free all my sins and every evil deed i've been buried in the deepest sea he don't remember all the wrongs that I've done Cause it's been paid for By the blood of his son Now I'm saved, sealed and satisfied Cause I've been born again Now I'm a Christian I have been redeemed I am a Christian I have been set free All my sins and every evil deed I've been buried in the deepest sea He don't remember all the wrongs that I've done Cause it's been paid for by the blood of His Son Now I'm saved, sealed and satisfied Cause I've been born again He don't remember all the wrongs that I've done Cause it's been paid for by the blood of his son now i'm saved sealed and satisfied because i've been born again
Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad he don't remember all the wrongs you've done? He said he'd cast them in the sea of his forgetfulness, never to be remembered against us anymore. Amen. Praise God. You may not forget them, but he does. He's the only one that can forget. Amen. The Lord can forget, and he forgives. I appreciate his goodness to us. Amen. Appreciate Ricky Green being with us tonight. I'm going to ask him to come up and say a word for the Lord. Amen. Make him welcome. Amen. I knew his mom and dad for many, many years. I've known Ricky quite a few years. Amen. We appreciate his family. Well, the Lord's good, isn't he? Look around and smile at somebody and say, This is the day that the Lord made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. I got to thank you, boy. I didn't realize it had been many years since I'd been down here. I, counting back, I guess it's been 20 years or more since I've been down here. But it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Tell you, God's good to us, isn't he? Amen. He said, Come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. I tell you, I come expecting tonight. Amen. The old boy's laid at the gate called Beautiful. He was expecting something. But you know, he got more than what he was expecting. That's the way the Lord is. He always gives us more than what we're expecting, isn't he? And he's a good God. Just a good privilege to be here tonight. Amen. Can't wait to hear the word of God and just see what the Lord's going to do tonight. Amen. Every time we enter into the gates of the house of God, he said, he said, you know, he said, enter the gates with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. I just want to praise him and honor him and lift him up and magnify his name and come to see him. Boy, when the Lord shows up, man, any good thing can happen, can he? Just good to be here tonight. Appreciate you, Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. This is a United Christian Revival. Amen. We've got Baptist Christians in here tonight. We've got Warehouse Christians, Church of God Christians back here. <laughs> all kinds of Christians. Amen. I told them the other day there's only one heaven. We're all going to the same place. Amen. Praise God. All right. I'm going to ask Brother Tom to come and give us a word tonight and a song. Amen. He sings a good song. It's your season to be blessed. Come on, brother. He's 70 years old. You'll have to wait on him. <laughs> Happy birthday. Man, I'll tell you what. God is good. You know, he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Uh, this Indian man was pretty mean out, out in the West there. He was... Uh, drunk, and when he'd come into church, he would tear up everything. So he come into this little meeting, and uh, everybody was afraid. You know, he's going to tear up something. So the the preacher had to say it real plain, so that they could understand it. They didn't have an education, but she said, "Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." And man, that Indian guy, he's real tall. He come up and fell on the altar, said, Jesus, 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 and got up. And they was all afraid at first to go down there. But when uh, they realized he was down there praying, man, said, they run down there. And the time they got there, he got up. And uh, they said, come on, let's pray. He said, you've, done a, you've been mean, a lot, of, a lot of mean. You need to pray some more. He said, no. He said, I'm saved. <laughs> he said did you not say whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord hallelujah man I'm telling you right now whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved hallelujah and man he become the greatest worker to win so many more than all the rest of the people and he just hollered Jesus three times. Lord, have mercy. If everybody knew how easy it is to get saved, all you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord, and he shall, we shall be saved. Hallelujah. G. Cole, I see. Well, it's your season to be blessed. God made you a promise. He shall be Gonna open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. Woo! It's your season to be blessed. 
Well, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Woo. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. They're going to open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. It's your season yet to be blessed. Glory. Yeah, it's your season to be blessed. For God made me a promise. A test. I'm going to open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. Yeah, it's your season to be blessed. Well, I've been through the fire, I've been through the flood, Woo. but I'm standing here because of his blood. I'm going to open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. Yeah, it's your season, oh, to be blessed. Woo. Look at somebody say, it's my season oh, to be blessed. Woo. God made me a promise. He'll stand the test. Gonna open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. Yeah, it's your season. Oh, it's your season. Yeah, it's your season to be blessed. Yeah. Oh, can we prophesy this a little bit? It's your season. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give Tom a cheer. Praise God. Amen. It's your season to be blessed. Got a real good Church of God preacher here tonight. I don't want him to come testify. Brother Johnny Schuler. Come on, brother. Love Brother Johnny. He's 70 also. <laughs> it said what? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I appreciate the Lord. And there's somebody told me uh, earlier in the week, said, uh, and I couldn't understand him because I can't hear good sometimes. He said, uh, uh, John, uh, Jonathan Trump or Crump said his name, his picture's on the walls everywhere. It's going to be here. And I, I thought he said Trump. <laughs> so, so I thought I'd better come and find out who he was. He said, oh, you know who he is. After, after he, he finally confessed who he was. But uh, I do appreciate the Lord. I'll tell you, it's good to be in the house of God and to worship him. And like that song there was, uh, uh, the Lord said, try me and prove me. See if I'll not open up the windows of heaven and pour out, pour out a blessing that you can't contain. And I'll tell you, if we ever need that today, we, we need a, a blessing from the Lord. But we need to draw close to him and to love him and with all our heart, mind, and strength. And he'll, he'll do the rest. And I, I just I come expecting that from the Lord. I didn't come for, to make a show or anything else. But I come in the name of the Lord. And he said, where two or three are gathered in his name, he said, I'll be there in the midst. And I praise God for that. God bless each one of you. I love every one of you. I even love him too. <laughs> praise the Lord. All right, give Charles a cheer as he comes to sing. Amen. Praise the Lord. All the way from Charlotte, North Carolina, or somewhere down that way. <laughs> Charlie Griffin. He's famous. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. I said, 
Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Come on and call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Well, his line is never busy. Tell him what you want. Oh, his line is never busy. Tell him what you want. His line is never busy. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. I like this verse. If you need salvation, tell him what you want. Oh, if you need a healing, tell him what you want. If you need life's miracle, tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. Come on and call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. I said, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell I think you kind of know it. Would you sing it now? Come on and call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. Mm-hmm. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him. I think you got it now. Come on. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. Come on and call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Come on and call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Funny thing is, we come to church and we keep right on singing and we keep right on hearing the preaching and we pray and we say, Lord, do this. Lord, do that. And we hack down that Sears and Roebuck catalog of wish lists and we sit down there and say, Lord, do it all. And then when we get ready to leave, we pick it right back up, put it under our arm and we take it home with us. There's something about calling on the King of Kings the Lord of Lords, knowing that he is the maker of all things, the blessings and the blesser of all things. So maybe we just need to call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Why don't you call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Come on and call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. I don't think you heard me. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him tonight. Guess what? He still answers prayer. He still heals the sick. He still performs miracles. He still saves today. He is the one that can make it all worthwhile when you begin to put your trust and your faith in him. Somebody ought to be saying amen about right now because you know it's the truth. When you call on him, he's never going to let you down. Can somebody say amen? Praise God. Praise the Lord. All righty, from Cornerstone Covenant Church, Brother Danny Honeycutt. We want him to come and testify and sing a song. Jonathan, you know what song he's going to sing, don't you? In, in E-flat. Come on, give the Lord a cheer tonight, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. I think the last time I was here, Sister Hall was with us, amen. We had a wonderful time. But you know, I was sitting there thinking, Brother Crump, there's a, there's a 
place in the Bible that we, as Pentecostals, we love to look back and reminisce over these scriptures. There, when they were up in the upper room, Brother Gerald, we realize that the Bible says there was about 120, amen. And he said they were there for about 10 days, Brother Church, and they were praying and seeking God's face. And you know, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day. I believe what happened there that day because of what the scripture says. I believe while they were there, that 120 were there praying and seeking God's face. I think some of them were around there that maybe had some hard feelings with one another, maybe said something about one another. They was 120 there. You know how human beings are. Let's just get real tonight. And I believe while they were there praying, I believe God began to deal with their hearts. And I believe when they were there, they started hugging each other's neck and asking forgiveness and begin to repent one, with one another. Say, how do you know that, Brother Danny? Because when they came out of that place, the Bible says they were in one mind and one accord. And when they got in one mind and one accord, folk, there was a supernatural of an act of God that rolled through that place. And we call it the infilling of the Holy Ghost. He said it came down Holy Ghost ghost and fire and filled everyone in the place it was a supernatural act of God I wonder my friends sitting here tonight if we as God's people some of us may be Baptists some of us may be Church of God some of us are Pentecostals I wonder what would happen here tonight if we all would get in one mind and one accord and want the same thing from God there, there would liable to be in a, and God would honor his word if we would do it that there would be a supernatural act of God roll through this house and God may fill with the Holy Ghost and he may heal somebody, he may touch somebody. There's no telling what God may do, amen. But it hinges on what we do. Let me tell you something about God that I've learned. If you'll do what he says, he'll honor his word and he'll do what he says. God will move if you'll do what he says to do, amen. Nothing more, nothing less. And we know what happened from there on in the Acts. We find, we read. And let me tell you something tonight, folks. Jesus is coming back soon. And he's not going to come back for anything less than what he left. Amen. So we better get busy for God. Amen. Because this thing's about to wind up. Somebody say amen. It's about to wind up. I want to be ready, don't you? I ain't mad at nobody. I, I, I hope I, nobody has anything against me. I'm going to make it right if I can. I've told my church I'm not going to let nobody or no thing cause me to miss God. The only thing I'm mad, about, mad at tonight is the devil, as Brother Gerald would say. That's who I'm mad at tonight. I'm not mad at anybody because I want to keep this heart right. I want to keep my life right and keep it right with God. Amen. Somebody give him a cheer. Amen. Amen. Well, he's a ripple of the stream. He's the God of everything. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He was dead, but now he's alive. He holds the keys we need not strive. And some sweet day he's coming back for you and me. Well, he's all that I need. Well, he's all that I need. Yes, Jesus is all I'll ever need. Oh, he promised in his word that my prayers would all be heard and every little robin he would feed. Yes, he's all that I need. He's all that I need. Yes, Jesus is all I'll ever need. 
Yes, he's all that I need. Well, he's all that I need. Yes, Jesus is all I'll ever need. Give him a cheer tonight, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That man got lungs, don't he? He don't need no microphone. <laughs> He's louder than I am without a microphone. <laughs> Praise God. Appreciate appreciate you, Brother Daddy. I want Jonathan to sing, go and tell somebody just before Brother Gerald comes to preach, okay? Once was a blind man, Lord gave back his sight. Had to tell somebody, couldn't keep it quiet. For once he's touched you, you're never the same. Gotta tell somebody, gotta praise his name. Go tell somebody what he's done for you. Go and tell somebody what the Lord can do. How he gave you victory, how he's brought you through. Go and tell somebody what he's done for you. Now there was a cripple sitting by the road But when he met Jesus, he was sin made whole I could see him walking, then he starts to run Had to tell somebody what the Lord had done Go and tell somebody what he's done for you. Go and tell somebody what the Lord can do. How he gave you victory, how he's brought you through. Go and tell somebody what he's done for you. Now there was a cripple sitting by the road But when he met Jesus, he was sin made whole I can see him walking, then he starts to run Had to tell somebody what the Lord had done Tell somebody what he's done for you. Go and tell somebody what the Lord can do. How he gave you victory. How he's brought you through. Go and tell somebody what he's done for you. How he's gave you victory, how he's brought you through. Go and tell somebody what he's done for you. All right, praise the Lord. Now, the best thing ever come out of Arkansas, here's Brother Gerald Hicks. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord, everybody. One more time. Isn't it wonderful to be in church on Friday night? Hallelujah. No better place I would rather be 
on Friday night than right here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Feeling the wonderful presence of God. Praise the Lord. I was trying to thank myself. I, I, I'm assuming that it's been since around 1985, probably since I've been here uh, to Hillside. Uh, back in the early 1980s when Brother Hall would come and have revival here uh, we, we would always make the trip one or two nights during every meeting and, uh, and be here in the revival services and I can remember this building being filled every pew totally full people in the aisles and the front full and just the presence of the Lord would be so rich and so life changing praise God I remember I had been witnessing to a young man and uh, his mother and father were, were business owners in Huntersville uh, they owned a they owned a, a, a very prominent furniture store a very very prominent furniture store in Huntersville and uh, they were they were affluent people they lived on Lake Norman and uh, and so I, I got to uh, I got to witnessing to their to their son at school and little did I know that he had some he had some Pentecostal uh, knowledge because his mother had been attending a four square gospel church and so I got to witnessing to him and uh, and he said, I want you, to, want you to come over and meet my parents. I want to introduce you to my, to my parents. And so I was able to, to go over and meet this young man's mom and dad. And, uh, and I started hanging around their furniture store some on Saturday afternoons. And uh, so I, I got to, I got to tell him, I got to talking to this, this father. And I asked him, I said, uh, have you ever personally met a prophet? He said, a prophet? I said, yes, have you, ever, have you ever met a prophet? He said, well, prophets were only in the days of the Bible. I said, oh, no. I said, there are some modern-day prophets that are living among us even as we speak. He said, I find that very hard to believe. He said, uh, he said, I just find that hard to believe. I said, well, I said, what are you doing next week? Do you have any plans uh, uh, through the week, maybe Wednesday through Saturday, one of, those, one of those nights? He said, well, I think we could get off one of those nights. I said, well, if, if you want to meet a modern-day prophet, I said, if you'll go with me to Hillside Baptist Church in Hickory, you'll meet a modern day prophet. I said, Brother H. Richard Hall from Cleveland, Tennessee is going to be conducting revival meetings there next week. And uh, I remember his son came to school and he was so excited. He said, he said, my daddy told me to tell you that he's going. He's going to go to the revival meeting. And uh, I remember telling him on the way up here, I said, now, you know that a prophet, one of the ways you know that someone is a real prophet, I said, they have the gift of discernment. He said, well, what is discernment? I said, that means that they have the ability to discern the good and the bad that's in your life. And his eyes got real big. and He didn't say anything. He got real quiet. And... Uh, I said, I said, this prophet that we're going to see, I said, he's got that gift of discernment. He said, you mean he tells people things about their life? I said, oh, absolutely. He said, what kind of stuff does he tell people? I said, well, he tells them whether they eat Rice Krispies or Cheerios for breakfast. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe not exactly that, but that kind of detail right and uh, I said I said he said you, you mean he, he really he really does I said absolutely he said do you think he's going to do that tonight I said I'm certain he's going to do that tonight and uh, 
So I remember we got here and we sat right about about that same pew where Brother and Sister Church is at, but we were kind of in the middle and it was all full and, you know, people were pressed in. And uh, I won't ever forget when Brother Hall started discerning people, he, uh, he called that man out. And I mean, he, he read his pedigree. I mean, up one side and down the other. I mean, even to the fact that Brother Hall said, you're a business owner and I see you sitting at a desk and you're counting large sums of money. Yeah. And uh, after church, he said, he said, I'll never doubt again. He said, I'll never doubt again. He said, there's no possible way that that man could have known that even today before I came that I was sitting at a desk just like he said, counting large sums of money. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, you know, and, and the beautiful thing about that is it's, it's, it's just as real tonight. Hallelujah. Praise. It's just as real tonight as it was then. And so I'm just so happy to be here. And I love Brother and Sister Crump. And uh, I have always admired them. Uh, I only knew Brother Crump really from a distance but I remember hearing him sing and testify so many times through the years in Brother Hall's meetings and I always admired as a young man I admired his, his humility it, it just it was something that stood out to me it was something that, that just shined you know I, I remember seeing him at various times at camp meeting at Cleveland and I can remember you know his humility would just shine and I always admired that as a young man and I'm so honored tonight to be here and uh, we love and appreciate each one of you so very much we are going to get into the word but we got to do one more thing before we do that uh, Sister Polly Hilton is here tonight and you know that she is the president of UCCMA and she is certainly no stranger to Hillside but uh, today is Sister Polly's birthday and we want to honor her tonight and we want to publicly say happy birthday to Sister Polly. I know that Brother Honeycutt had a birthday yesterday and I, I did, Brother Church, did you have a birthday? All right. So we got three birthdays. So uh, I'm just going to sing. Is that all right? Praise God. Oh, happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. Oh, happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. And the best one that you've ever had. Let's clap our hands for them. Say, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to we wanna keep having those birthdays, don't we? Praise God. Thank you so much, musicians. And uh, we're going to get right into the word of the Lord tonight. And uh, I feel real certain that what the Lord has laid upon my heart for this service is not anything new to any of us that are in this room. I'm certain that what I have to say is uh, familiar to some and even more so to others. But uh, I do believe that uh, regardless of how familiar we are with it, amen, we can always glean something new and fresh from it. Isn't that right? Amen. That's what separates the Bible from all other books. Is that right? The fact that the Bible is what? The Bible is a living book. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible is a living book. And that, that's why when you pick up the word of the Lord and you start to read it, regardless of how many times you've read it, some places in the word of the Lord we have read over and over time and again. However, every time we read it, it speaks to us anew, don't it? Praise God. Amen. And you know, you can look at a story one week 
and you can glean something from that. You can pick it up and look at it again the next week and say, wow, how did I miss that? Amen. And then you can pick it up the week after that and you're scratching your head in astonishment. You know, how, how, how did I pass over this? You know, and it's because the Bible is a living book. Praise God. And so I'm thankful tonight for the word of the Lord. And so we're going to look uh, into, the, into the word of God in the Old Testament. And uh, this is uh, one of those, one of those uh, passages, one of those stories that uh, is special to me. It's found in 1 Samuel 16. And I'll, I'll do a little reading and then I'll try not to be as as long uh, with my introduction uh, because of my reading. But uh, we'll begin with verse number one. In the word. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite for I have provided me a king among his sons. Hallelujah. So we hear the Lord saying to Samuel, it's time for you to stop mourning because I have someone else in mind. Is that right? Amen. God is saying it's time to stop mourning because I have someone else in mind. And Samuel said, how can I go if Saul hears it? He will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord and call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do and you shall anoint unto me him whom I name among thee. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, don't go there with a preconceived idea. Don't go there with some strange uh, notion as to who you think think it might possibly be because God said I'm going to name them to you once you arrive hallelujah so just go with an open mind go with an open heart go with a blank slate praise God hallelujah why because God said this time things are going to be different amen remember the first time Israel clamored for a king. God went looking for a man. Is that right? Amen. But understand when Saul rejected God, amen, and God removed his spirit from him, somehow I have to believe that God must have shook his head and he must have said in the realm of the spirit never again hallelujah they clamored for a king and I searched for a man but never again Hallelujah, praise God. That's not the way it's going to be next time. That will not be palace protocol on the next occasion. Amen. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, have you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to sacrifice now notice that when the prophet arrived in Bethlehem they were shook up why because more often than not in those days 
days when a prophet showed up he was going to point his fiery finger of judgment and he was going to declare unequivocally amen for all to hear you are the man is that right and so as soon as he shows up in Bethlehem they're trembling they're afraid they want to know just why have you come he said don't be nervous he said don't be upset don't be beside yourself I've come in peace we're going to offer a sacrifice unto the Lord hallelujah the Bible said and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said surely the Lord's anointed is before me now notice from this one verse how easy it is sometimes to quickly forget what God said what did God say just a few verses before God said don't go with a preconceived idea don't go with some notion in your mind as to who you think it's going to be amen come on God said you're not going to know who they are you're not going to point them out to me amen God said I'm going to point them out to you hallelujah now I'll be quite honest amen you know sometimes we look through the crowd and we try to we try to see who it is we think that God is going to use we try to pinpoint who it is we think that God is going to anoint amen we try to discover just exactly who is it that God is going to anoint amen but understand hallelujah that God does not look through the same set of eyes that you and I look through amen God does not hallelujah view man in the same way that we view man we look at the color of a person's hair we look at the style of their clothing we look at the size of their stature Amen. We listen to the sound of their voice. Amen. We want to figure out whether they're educated or uneducated, what kind of pedigree they have, how long they've been in the church, and just exactly who do they know. Isn't that right? Amen. But I'm going to tell you what. God is not like that. Amen. Fact is, in another place, he would remind us, not only would he remind us, he would teach us a valuable lesson, and that is simply this, that God's ways are not our ways, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen, but his ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Amen, through the years I have often discovered that that many, many times God chooses to touch. He chooses to use. He chooses to anoint the ones that we tend to look over. The ones that we tend to look past. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. Why? Because God sees the heart and we don't often have the ability to do that amen see God said don't do it and he's already in verse number 6 looking at Eliab thinking surely he's the one but the Lord said unto Samuel look not on his countenance 
or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Hallelujah. Come on, God sees the spirit of the man. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, you know, I'm praying for some talent and I'm praying for some skill and I'm praying for some ability. Amen. I know I know a beautiful, precious young lady. And the reason I call her beautiful and precious is because she's been my wife for three decades and you know what Uh, there have been many times when she would say to me I I don't play any instruments and I don't sing any songs and seemingly in the eyes of people I don't do anything special in the church amen but you know what she said "What, what did you what did you see in me I said, I'm going to tell you what I saw in you. Amen. I saw something that God said is of a great price. Come on. Hallelujah. What is that? God said that a meek and a quiet spirit, especially in the female race. Amen. God said that that is of great price. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You know what? Sometimes we we want to look on the outside and we want to judge how somebody moves in the natural. We want to judge by their intelligence and by their skill and by their ability. Amen. But I'm going to tell you tonight, if you're asking God for something, you would be years ahead if if you just simply ask him for the right spirit. I'll come on, somebody. Amen. If you're going to ask him for something, amen, beyond talent and beyond skill and beyond ability and beyond intelligence and resource and all of these other things, we would be years and years ahead if we would simply just ask God. Give me the right spirit. Hallelujah. Give me the right spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. See, he said, God, he's going to look on the heart, the spirit of a man. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And Samuel said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these these seven young men that stand before me. I'm not saying they're not strong. I'm not saying they're not intelligent. I'm not saying they're not stalwart. I'm not saying they're not good. But God said, these I have not chosen. Amen. Amen. Remember that many are what? Many are called, is that right? But few are what? Few are chosen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesse, you have called these seven to stand before me, and it's all right. It's okay. It's good of you as a father that you have called these seven to come and stand before me. However, these seven... 
none of them God has chosen amen even though you have called them God has not chosen them hallelujah you know what I've seen in the the last decade especially uh, in other parts of the country it may not be as prevalent in uh, this area of the country as it is in some other parts but I've seen I've seen some men that have given uh, 30 to 50 years of their life uh, to the ministry uh, and in that 30 to 50 years uh, anybody that God raised up under them uh, had gone on to other places and uh, had developed and grown their own ministry uh, and uh, it was time to retire uh, it was time to pass the baton uh, it was time to hand off the torch uh, to someone else uh, amen and you know what sometimes uh, if we're not careful uh, you know what we do we just hand it off uh, to the person that's closest to us uh, amen but often uh, uh, they may be called uh, but are they chosen uh, let, come on somebody uh, I said they may be called uh, but are they chosen uh, hallelujah I can promise you uh, amen in the day and hour in which we live uh, God is looking for more uh, than just men uh, who are called uh, he's looking for more uh, than just women uh, who are called uh, God is searching uh, for someone uh, whether they be rich or poor uh, bond or free uh, male or female uh, young or old uh, educated or illiterate uh, it makes no difference uh, he's looking for somebody uh, that can be chosen hallelujah glory to God he said we are a royal priesthood and what a chosen generation I believe that God has chosen this generation to reveal himself in a very special way I believe that amen hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all your children? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. And behold, he is a keeper of sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he comes hither. That sounds pretty important. To me, that sounds extremely significant. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, first off, somewhere in the back of Samuel's mind he must be wondering if you uh, stood the oldest before me why would you not stand the youngest before me amen if you indeed have eight sons why would you only march seven of them in front of me just exactly what is it about David why is it that you as his father of all people decided to discriminate against him amen did you discriminate against him because he's the baby because he's the youngest because he's out in the field because he lacks the ability that the others have Just exactly why would you discriminate against one of your very own? I mean, it would seem to me that if you were going to promote anyone, you would promote your own, right? And here, Jesse has 
not accidentally. It was not an oversight. He knew exactly what he was doing, right? He was completely coherent and cognitive in his choice and his decision to leave David behind in the field. And now the prophet says, we're not even going to sit down until you fetch him and he comes hither to us. And so they sent and brought him in. Now verse 12 says he was ruddy and of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look upon, look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Now, at first glance, this verse in and of itself leads us to believe that David's outward appearance was not as rugged, masculine, or manly as his seven other brothers. Fact is, the scripture points it out to us clearly that somehow his countenance was a little softer and goodly to look upon. The Bible said that the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So imagine that up to this day David seemed to be as average and as normal and as ordinary as any other young man his age the only thing apparently at this point in his life that he had going for him was the fact that he had a soft countenance that uh, his, his features appeared to be a little softer a little more gentle if you please and so it is that we don't really know anything else about David at this point we don't know a lot about his musical ability we don't know a lot about his athletic prowess we don't know very much about his military genius we don't know anything about his skill or his desire in battle at this point. Amen. Just that when he comes in from the field he stands before the prophet and the very moment the prophet poured that horn of oil on the top of David's head. Amen. The Bible said that from that moment the spirit of the Lord came upon him hallelujah I'm going to tell you that men change dramatically once the spirit of the Lord comes upon them hallelujah women change instantly 
say the very moment the spirit of God comes upon them hallelujah you can see some people and they get up amen and for a few moments they stumble and they stagger and you see they're clearly trying to find their way they're trying to navigate through their own skill through their own weakness through their own lack amen but then something happens hallelujah the spirit of the Lord comes down upon them and when the spirit comes down upon them it's like turning a light on in a dark room amen all of a sudden the sound of their voice begins to change all of a sudden there is a strength and there is a confidence and there is a knowing that comes over them that is far beyond anything they could do in themselves amen it is clearly the spirit of the Lord I have I have told people over and over time and again I've had young men that aspire to the ministry and I've had them to ask me over and over uh, where did you learn how to deliver your message and where did you learn how to put your messages together and what resources do you use and what what books do you glean from the most amen and just exactly how are you able to do what you do and I tell them over and over I have no strength in myself I have no might no power no special ability of any kind in myself amen when I come and stand behind a desk like this one I'm standing behind tonight amen I'm as average and I'm as ordinary and I'm as normal amen as anybody else in the room but at some point amen things start changing why because the spirit of God comes down and when the spirit of God settles in upon a man there is a definite change that happens so we don't know anything about David other than a brief description of his outward appearance until he is anointed the very moment he is anointed something happens he goes back to keeping sheep I know that the timetables are not always exactly the same and from one writer to the next from one theologian to the next sometimes the timetables of a person's life don't exactly line up or parallel however we do understand that from the time that Samuel poured that oil on David's head somewhere around 14 years would pass before he would actually have a crown placed upon that same head. Amen. Praise God. First he receives the anointing and then he receives the appointment. Hallelujah. Come on, lots of folks want the appointment without the anointing. Hallelujah. But understand tonight that David did not immediately get the appointment he got the anointing hallelujah praise God and when that anointing came down upon him it would empower him it would enable him it would allow him hallelujah to go on and to conquer and to pursue and to challenge and to overcome and then finally one 
one day the appointment would arrive. And on the day of the appointment, not only would he look back and remember the oil, he would also remember all of the moments that brought him a man to that place. So basically what I want to do for just a moment is use David as our example and just remind you that not only are we anointed and we don't ever want to forget that but if God ever anoints you get ready he's also going to appoint you God don't anoint us just so we can walk around a man with a proverbial halo around our head telling everyone I'm anointed hallelujah be careful of telling people you're anointed because you'll tell the wrong person and the devil inside of them will challenge your anointing amen isn't that right I mean you, you got to be careful running around telling folks bless God I'm anointed praise the Lord I'm anointed hallelujah I'm anointed because you tell the wrong person amen and that devil that's residing inside of them is going to rise up and challenge your anointing amen you remember uh, what happened to uh, uh, the seven sons of Sceva is that right amen you know what happened to them don't you hallelujah they got their clothes ripped off of them and they got their eyes blacked and their noses bloodied amen and what did what did that devil say that devil said Jesus I know and Paul I know but who are you amen praise God so you know we want to do more than just go around telling folks we're anointed amen we want the anointing hallelujah to enable us to overcome the challenges and the obstacles that we will find along the roads of life. There's going to be all kinds of challenges. Going to be all kinds of obstacles. Amen. Along the roads of life. David had many challenges. David would face an enormous amount of obstacles. Amen. Some of them would be private. Some of them would be public. Amen. Some of them would be uh, uh, severe and some of them not so severe. Hallelujah. The thing about David is uh, he, he developed uh, a man not just uh, a love but he, uh, he developed a passion for God because of this change uh, that came upon him. Hallelujah. Amen. When this change came down upon him, David received a new song. Fact is, he would go on to say, he hath put a new song in my mouth. Hallelujah. I don't really know what kind of song David was singing before then. Amen. But after the hand of God came down upon on him David said he has put a new song in my mouth even praise unto the Lord hallelujah fact is David would become so passionate about his praise to God at one point he said I'm going to praise him in the morning I'm going to praise him in the 
evening. I'm going to praise him in the afternoon. Hallelujah. But not long after that, David said these three times a day are merely not enough to praise God. And so he set aside seven distinct times during the day that he would specifically praise God. However, this intense praise would lift him up into a place, amen, that finally David would say, even seven times a day is not enough. He said his praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm telling you, it's possible for you and I to arrive at a place that the praise of God remains continually in our mouth. It's possible to reach a place, amen, from the moment we open our eyes in the morning to the moment we close them in the nighttime that our mouth be continually filled with the praises of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Now I know you have to have to you know get ready because uh, you're going to come under attack. And uh, people are going to label you as radical. I believe when I first got in the church I didn't actually hear the word radical much. I believe back then people used the word fanatical. Fact is, I remember hearing some people say, stay away from them tent revivals. Those are nothing but a bunch of fanatics. Yeah. I heard them say it often said all them people that show up at them tent revivals that's just the fanatics that all the churches have turned out they don't have no place else to congregate but under one of them tents yeah and uh, you, well, you, well you know I mean they, they get they get happy hallelujah and you know sometimes I mean you know, people are not the same. Some people, when they get happy, they cry, and that's all right. It's happy tears, and there's nothing wrong with happy tears. Praise God. But some people get happy, and they clap their hands. Some people get happy, and they stomp their feet. Some people get happy, and they, they lift their voice. I've got, a, I've got a friend. He's up in his 70s now, and, and I, I, know when he's, I know when he's been to church and they've had a good service. And uh, the reason I know Sister Judy is because he'll tell me, he'll tell me, boy, I got carried away shaking hands. Hallelujah. And I, I don't know why it is, but sometimes if the Spirit gets moving on him, boy, I mean, he, he'll just, before he even knows what's happened, he's done got out of the pew where he's at, and he's done been all over the house shaking hands with people, you know? And he just can't help himself. He's just, he's just happy. And, uh, you know, he, he, he just feels like it's, it's better to let it out than it is to hold it in. Amen. Praise God. And so he just, you know, he just kind of, you know, he, he just gets happy like that. So we're not all the same. We don't all, we don't all show our emotion in the same way. We, we don't, and you know, but, but David, he said his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. And you know what? When you reach that place that the praise of God is continually in your mouth, get ready because you will come under some opposition. You will come under some enemy fire. Hallelujah. But praise God, guess what? That anointing is going to be there as a protector, as a shield. Hallelujah. See, David, he was anointed by the prophet Samuel. Hallelujah. To be what? To be king. God said, you are going to be the king. 
you'll be the one to wear the crown. And uh, David would walk away. He would go back to keeping sheep. And uh, he, would, he would smell those sheep. And he would keep those sheep and protect those sheep for years to come. Amen. But you know what? Praise God. He could never forget what the prophet said to him. And in the days and the weeks and the months that, 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 that were ahead of him, he would discover that the anointing, it does something incredible. The Bible said that that it destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every yoke of doubt, every yoke of fear, every yoke of unbelief. Amen. The Bible said that the anointing destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. Did you know that some people, they struggle with habits, hang-ups, and addictions and they don't understand the secret to, to overcoming and that secret is the anointing hallelujah that secret is the presence and the power of God I remember pastoring a lady for some time and she said brother Hicks when I got saved she said I was smoking two packs of cigarettes every single day, seven days a week and I had been doing that since I was a, a teenage girl and now she was up in her mid thirties and she got saved and she said you want me to tell you how I know I got saved I said how is that she said not only did the guilty burden of sin lift away not only did I feel a peace that surpassed all human understanding she said but I, I, I got saved on a Sunday afternoon and she said it was Thursday morning when I happened to walk by the, the fireplace in the living room and I stopped and I looked and on top of that mantle was my cigarettes and they were still there in the same place that I had put them four days before on Sunday morning she said that day I knew I was saved hallelujah and she would go on to live and serve the Lord some 50 plus years with that addiction and that yoke destroyed because of of the anointing. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. She didn't have to attend a class. She didn't have to attend a seminar. She didn't have to go through a 12 step program. Amen. It was the anointing that destroyed that yoke was destroyed praise God and see so many have testified that same thing in recent weeks and months I have witnessed three young men in particular that have been in the drug scene uh, quite heavily uh, in the last few years of their life uh, and all three of these young men through uh, a different set of circumstances uh, have recently come to God. Amen. And all three of them have testified to being completely delivered from their addiction. Amen. From their habit. From their hang up. One of them on a Thursday night. Hallelujah. Praise God. He came and fell down at the altar and tears streaming down his face and after praying with him a few minutes I asked him to stand
stand up and raise his hands to the Lord. I said, now son, when you raise your hands to God, the very moment you raise them, you are saying to God, Brother Charlie, I surrender. Hallelujah. The very moment you raise them, you're saying to God, I surrender. And the moment he raised those hands, hallelujah, he started to tremble violently and he fell backward to the floor under the power of the Holy Ghost speaking in a heavenly language as the Spirit of God gave him the utterance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He would come to a revival meeting. I preached just a few weeks after that Thursday night service. And uh, he would come to, come to revival meeting on a Tuesday night. Amen in another city. Hallelujah. Had a big smile on his face. And uh, he said, Brother Hicks, I'm still talking in tongues. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'm still talking in tongues. Praise God. Why? Because the anointing, it destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. We can't destroy it. We don't have the power in or of ourselves. Amen. If we did, we wouldn't be bound to begin with. Amen. But thank God it is his anointing that does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. Amen. I saw a, another young man, praise God, who would, who would come to the altar in a service very similar. And uh, was that was in Blacksburg, South Carolina. And uh, I didn't know, I didn't know anything about this young man. I didn't know anything about his life or about anything he might be struggling with. But uh, he came to the altar and was standing there in the center aisle. And as he was standing there in the center aisle and I was going through there praying for people. I got to where he was at and I started to pray for him and just before I started to pray for him I said young man you don't have the ability to deliver yourself amen but right now if you'll say yes God will do for you what you cannot do for yourself hallelujah and I want you to know amen I, 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 went to, I went to put my right hand on his chest to pray for him and before I could get my hand stretched out something knocked him violently backward about three or four foot he hit the floor and he laid there like a dead man and when he opened his eyes he sat up and his eyes were wide and he just sat there in the aisle and when he finally got up on his feet he said I don't know what that was that hit me he said but I've never felt anything in my life that felt as good as that hallelujah God delivered him praise God Amen. What is it? It is the anointing. The anointing, it destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. God anointed David. You know why God anointed David? And I'm going to close with this. I'm not finished. I'm just going to quit. But God anointed David because there was a, a lion in his path. Amen. God anointed David. David because there was a bear in his path. Amen. God anointed David because there was a giant standing on a hillside. Hallelujah somebody. Amen. Did you know you don't have the ability to see your tomorrow but God sees all of our tomorrows. Hallelujah. You don't have the ability to recall all of your yesterdays 
but God can remember and recall every yesterday as if they were today do you hear me friend amen and you know what God is saying I'm going to anoint you why because I know what's through the next door I know what's over the next hill I know what's around the next curve hallelujah amen so David was anointed amen and guess what when the lion came he was ready and when the bear came he was ready and then finally one day that monumental call came daddy said David I've got a wagon full of provision and I want you to take it to your brothers and I want you to get everything out of them you possibly can about the battle and bring it back to me I want all of the news that you can possibly receive concerning the battle and you bring it back to me and so David was certainly excited about this adventure and he was like most young men his age the wheels of his mind were spinning and he had all of these uh, thoughts in his head about what he was going to see and what he was going to find and discover when he reached the battlefield he just knew for sure that his brothers were going to be standing on the front line wearing glistening armor and holding shiny shields and sharp swords and spears and they were going to be valiantly defending their beloved Israel however when David arrived it was not at all the way he envisioned a man fact is their armor was tarnished and dented and beat up their shields were rusty and worn their swords were dull and used up and those men were huddled around campfires and they were discouraged and they were despondent and they were disillusioned you know that kind of sounds like the church of today don't it amen in a lot of places the church is like that army we're huddled around campfires and we're discouraged and we're despondent and we're disillusioned and all we can talk about is the giant that we're facing all we can talk about are the obstacles that are ahead of us all we can focus on is what we no longer have but you know what God is demanding for someone somewhere to stop looking at what you no longer have and start looking at what you have left come on somebody amen somebody said oh but you don't understand this global pandemic has left me with a weak feeble frail anemic paralyzed congregation who are bewildered and they're scared and afraid and uncertain and I'm just not sure what the outcome is going to be amen but you know what we don't need to focus on what we no longer have somebody said you don't understand since 2020 I've buried 47 people people in my church and you don't realize what a loss that is but understand we have to stop looking at what we no longer have and we must start looking again at what we have left amen praise God glory to God amen David said what is wrong is there not 
a cause. If the pandemic did anything, it helped many of us to lose sight of the cause. Isn't that right? Amen. I mean many that have been strong and courageous and stalwart and faithful and consistent and determined. Amen. Now, you know, they're weak and they're frail and they're incapable and they're uncertain. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's right. Come on. And you know what the devil's saying? You're through. It's over. Quit. Give up turn back, walk away. Amen. But this is no time to quit. This is no time to give up. This is no time to turn back or walk away. It's time to remind ourselves: is there not a cause? Amen. We are the generation that is going to make a difference in the world in which we live. Come on, we are the ones that are chosen. We are the ones that are elected. We are the ones that are ordained. We are the ones that are divinely anointed. He said, look, if none of you are willing to go and fight that giant, just send me, I'll go. That's all God really wants out of any of us is just simply, here am I, send me. Right? They take David and he stands before Saul and Saul was bewildered and surprised and Astonished, and he wants to know just, I, I know you, you're skillful on the harp. You're a good songwriter. and You've got a poetic gift. But what in the world, what in the world makes you think that you could stand up against a formidable challenge such as Goliath? David said, you really want to know? Yeah, I'd like to know why. He said, well, one day a bear came in and God delivered me out of the paw of the bear. He said, and it wasn't too long after that. He said, a lion showed up and he said, God delivered me out of the mouth of that lion. And he said, I am completely convinced. I'm positive. I'm certain. The same God, not another one, but the same God that delivered me out of the mouth of the lion and the same God that delivered me out of the paw of the bear is the same God that's going to deliver me out of the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine giant. Amen. And so you know what? He walks out of there with nothing but a shepherd's sling and a pouch hanging from his side. He stoops down at the brook in the valley. He picks up five stones, puts them in his bag, and he starts up yonder's hillside. And as he's climbing up the hillside, Goliath is saying to him, Saul must be a lot worse off than what I thought. He's sending a boy to do a 
man's job. Hello, but guess what? The giant could only see what David looked like on the outside. The giant could not see what David looked like on the inside. Amen. And you know what that giant said? I'm going to pull your head off of your scrawny little body and I'm going to feed your frail little carcass to the fowl of the air. David said, you come to me with a sword, a shield, and a spear. He said, but I come to you in the name of, come on, hallelujah, I'm not trusting in horses, and I'm not trusting in chariots. I'm not leaning upon flesh. I'm not depending on the might of the power of the ability of a man. I'm not depending on my intelligence, my pedigree, or my resource. I'm trusting in his presence. I'm believing in his power. I'm depending on his anointing. Stand on your feet all over the building. It's the anointing that truly destroys the yoke. And, you know, that's what has impacted our lives for so many years. Pastor Crump said he wasn't changing. Did you hear him say that? He said, I'm not, he said, he said, I've been doing this all my life and I'm not changing. You know why he's not changing? Because the anointing, it impacted him. It touched him. It changed him. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody said, How can you navigate the storms of life? How can you continue to fight one battle after another and climb one mountain after another because of the anointing? Come on. Because of the anointing. I I told somebody on the phone today before I stepped out of my hotel room, they said, please pray for me today has been a bad day I received difficult news today and it has shattered my world I said guess what I said as dark and difficult as today may seem tomorrow is going to be another day come on amen hello I said tomorrow is going to be another day glory to God amen and you know what it rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. Hallelujah. I don't know why it is, but sometimes Pastor Crump, bad things happen to good people. Amen. But guess what? God remains faithful through it all. Hallelujah. I told this person today, I said, evidently you must be much stronger and you must have much more resolve than what you thought. Why is that? God promised I will not put more on you than what you're able to bear. Come on, somebody. Amen. He knows what your tipping point is. He knows what your jumping off place is. He knows what the breaking point is for you. And God said, I'm not going to put more on you. Come on. Hallelujah. If you'll trust me, if you'll lean on me, if you'll depend on me, Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's needs all over this building tonight. And I'm just going to ask those that would like to come to come and stand around the front of this church. Hallelujah. And why don't we open our hearts and open our spirits to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. God has enabled us to come into this place tonight. He has allowed us to be able to feel his presence and his power in this place tonight. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to ask you to come and 
stand around the front with me for a moment or two. Amen. And why don't we just lift up our hearts? Why don't we lift up our voices? Why don't we just swing wide the gates of our soul? Why don't we open the doors of our heart tonight and say, come in, Jesus. Come in, Jesus. Oh, why don't we lay bare our soul tonight before God? I need you tonight, Lord. I want you tonight, oh God. I must have you in my heart and in my soul, Lord. I can't live without you. I cannot face another day alone. I need you tonight, oh God. I'm asking that you would step on the scene. I'm asking that you would stretch out your hand. I'm asking that you would make a difference in your great and mighty name. Oh, let's call on him as Pastor Crump sings tonight. Um, Holy Spirit, I need thee. Went to Mount Carmel to see what God would do. 
Elijah was on trial, Baal's prophets were there too. Well, Elijah built an altar for all around the sea, and the fire from heaven fall on me. Let it fall on me, let it fall on me. Let the power of the Lord from heaven fall on me. The power of the Holy Ghost, the power that fell on Pentecost, let the power from heaven fall on me. Let it fall on me, let it fall on me, let the power of the Lord from heaven fall on me, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power that fell on Pentecost, let the power from heaven fall on me. Oh, come on, let's praise him, brother. Let it fall on me, let it fall on me. Let the power of the Lord from heaven fall on me. The power of the Holy Ghost, the power that fell on Pentecost. Let the power from heaven fall on me. How many want to hear him play the song? Fall on me, let it fall on me. Let the power of the Lord from heaven fall on me. The power of the Holy Ghost, the power that fell on Pentecost, let the power from heaven fall on me. Well, Elijah went to Mount Carmel to prove what God would do. Elijah was on trial, Bell's prophets were there too. Well, Elijah built an altar for all around the sea, and let the fire from heaven fall on me let it fall on me let it fall on me let the power of the lord from heaven fall on me the power of the holy ghost the power that fell on pentecost let the power from heaven fall on me coming down 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 well down 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 the glory of the Lord is coming down. When the saints began to pray that the Lord would have his way, the glory of the Lord is coming down, coming down, 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 down. The glory of the Lord is coming down. When the saints began to pray that the Lord would have his way, the glory of the Lord is coming down. Hallelujah. Woo! Clap your hands to the Lord, somebody. Let's give him some praise. God bless you tonight. You may be seated. Thank you so much for being here. Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We just thank you so much for coming to church on Friday evening. And I want to really especially, I thank everyone, but I want to, I want to thank the, not just the saints, we, we need the saints. There would be no, no church without saints, but there would be no saints without a shepherd. And I, I want to thank these pastors, these ministers that have taken the time on Friday evening to to come and support this meeting. These ministers that have come tonight, they could have gone various places and done other things. Uh, you know, many of them pastor and are getting ready. I know 
Brother Green, Brother Honeycutt, and they're busy. And uh, I'll tell you, I talk to Brother Green sometimes, and he's as busy as a one-armed paper hanger. I mean, he's like me. He don't know if he's coming or going, if he's washing or hanging out. You know, just, I mean, just, I was talking to him one day. He said, he said, boy, some days there needs to be two of me. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's like that for these ministers and pastors. And I just thank you for coming and being here tonight to support this meeting, to support this church, Pastor Crump and his family. And uh, we just appreciate uh, Brother Crump and this church for standing with and believing in and praying for and loving UCCMA all through the years. They have loved and supported and believed in Brother and Sister Hall and United Christian Church and Ministerial Association, the ministers and the leaders and the staff that keep the ministry going in Cleveland, Tennessee. They've, they've loved and supported and prayed for us for so many, many years, and we just cannot thank them enough for that. And uh, we thank you because you have done the same and uh, we appreciate it and it does not go unnoticed and I, I was thinking today you know that the load is heavy it's a tremendous burden to work for God and to carry on the work of the Lord and uh, we, we need your help financially it's a, it's a tremendous cost but uh, God, God knows the need, and He is the supplier. And uh, and I I, I kind of tell people this, and it's just true because when you when you catch it, and I was reminded when Pastor Pastor Tom Church was up tonight singing, and I love that song too. This is your, it's my season, praise God. And I I, I speak that, I do. I, I speak it out of my mouth frequently this is my season this is my day this is my hour praise God but uh, you know I, I thought about it again tonight that if you want a blessing just give an offering <laughs> because God loves a cheerful giver and when you give an offering you are promised a blessing you're promised a blessing amen and so, so you want a blessing, then just give an offering. But maybe, maybe you're like me and maybe you're like some others. Maybe you need more than a blessing. Maybe you need a harvest. Maybe you need a harvest. So if you need a harvest, do more than give an offering sow a seed that's right hallelujah you have to sow it you got to put it in the ground you got to put it in fertile soil God spoke to me two years ago and said you tell the people that when they sow a seed to make sure the ground that they sow their seed in is prepared for harvest and I believe this ministry is fertile soil. I believe it's ground that has been cultivated and prepared for harvest. Praise God. And so I want to just encourage you tonight to just give your offering and sow your seed. Praise God. You want a blessing? Give an offering. If you want a harvest, sow a seed. And if you decide to sow a seed tonight, why don't you give that seed an assignment? I'm sowing this for my boy. I'm sowing this for my daughter. Fact is, not long ago, God spoke to me a specific amount and said, you do that for every member in your immediate family and write their name on it. Write their name on it. Glory, come on, glory, just... That's right. 
And so I want to encourage you tonight. Hallelujah. Without, without just taking up a lot of time because see, God, he knows what the need is and you know what he does? He speaks to you and he speaks to me. And guess what? God speaks to people that are going to respond. That's right. The people that often hear God's voice, they're the ones that respond. Somebody said, somebody said why, why, why don't I ever hear? Well, God has probably tried to speak to you before and you didn't respond. And so you know what? He speaks to those that respond, those that obey. Hallelujah. Now I remember the first time the Lord, you know, the very first time God told me to give everything I had. I hope he don't ever ask any of you to do that. That was the scariest moment of my life. Now understand, I'm as, I, I, I don't have two nickels to rub together sometimes. Now I'm not ashamed of that because I live by faith. That's what the men before me taught me to do. So it don't, you know what? The number that's in my bank account don't even bother me. I, it, don't, it don't cause me to, to, to sleep at night or stay awake. It don't even bother me because I live totally by faith. That's right. But the very first time God spoke to me and said, you give everything you have. Give it. I was a young evangelist. And at that time, I had a little bit of money. It wasn't a significant amount, but it was, it was enough to get me through for a couple of months. And I, I had it, and I had it saved, and I kept it in a, in a bag in the trunk of my car, hid up under my spare tire. And, uh, and so God said, you give everything and trust me. And uh, that scared me so bad, Pastor Crump. I argued with God for about 30 minutes while the man of God was preaching. And finally, I figured out, I think I've got a way to get myself off the hook. I said, Lord, if this is really you and not the devil speaking, I knew it wasn't the devil. The devil's not going to tell you to do that. I said, I said, you move upon that man that's preaching to receive an offering. The pastor of the church had already received an offering. And so I thought, well, I'm off the hook. And within five minutes, that man of God stopped. He turned around to the pastor and he said, do you believe I'm a man of God? He said, I do. He said, can I obey the Lord? He said, yes, you can. He said, God spoke to me to receive an offering. I thought my heart was going to stop beating. And I was going to have to be resuscitated. And so... I couldn't stand it. I knew what I had to do, Brother Danny. I got up and I walked out to my car and I got, I got my little bag and I went back in there and while everybody was giving their offer and I went around and I gave it to the clerk of the church and I told him, I said, this is the, my offering and uh, nobody knew what I did. I was as happy as a jaybird on a chocolate cake I walked across the street to the little parsonage that I lived in with the pastor and uh, the answering machine light was flashing. This was back in the late 80s. And uh, I pushed that button and it was a pastor from Florence, South Carolina and he said, Brother Hicks, he said, uh, call me when you get this message. So I called him and he said, he said, my family was singing this afternoon at a Pentecostal holiness church, homecoming, and said, uh, the Lord moved in such a way, the pastor announced that they were going to start revival tomorrow night and that God would send the evangelist. And he said, God spoke your name to me. Can you come? I said, I can come. And uh, I thought well, I don't have any money, but I've got enough gas in my car to make it there, and that's all right. 
I walked back across the street to the church and people were fellowshipping. And you know how people are. They just shake your hand. And so I was walking around and somebody shook my hand and they gave me a Pentecostal handshake. Yeah. And uh, I looked down and there was a $20 bill. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I can get me a Big Mac tomorrow on the way to church. You know, all we do is preach and eat. That's what they say anyway. And, uh, and so, so then another man came up to me and he just hugged my neck and he slipped something down in my pocket. And I didn't even think about it. And, and that night when I was getting ready to retire for the night, I was taking my suit off and, and I remember that and I reached in that pocket and I got that envelope out and it was a hundred dollar bill in that envelope. And I thought, God, look, you, you've already started giving it back to me. Well, I went to that revival. I was scheduled to go on a mission trip for three weeks and that trip was going to cost me about $3,500 plus my budget for the entire month while I was gone. And so I was going to need around $5,000 to be able to go on that trip and take care of everything. And uh, while I was preaching that week, that church raised all of the money for me to go on that trip. And there were five pastors that came and all five of those pastors scheduled me for revival. And uh, there was just one blessing after another for months and months and months. You know, and I was repaid over and over again just by the obedience of that one little nudge. So he's going to play us some good given music tonight and I'm going to ask you to march around tonight and bring your offering to the Lord. Would you do it? Praise God. He loves a cheerful giver. So let's just give it cheerfully tonight. Can we do it? Let's bring it to the Lord and we know he's going to bless you for it. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor Crump is coming back tonight and as we're being dismissed remember that Sister Polly has brought a number of books uh, DVDs, some CDs some uh, USB uh, 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 thumb drives with all of Brother Don Warren's music on it uh, you will be blessed by one of those, those are so very nice to have and uh, she has a couple of Bibles I think one large print uh, tonight also she has some new Shield of Faith magazines so please stop by the table and see her for a moment and, uh, and pick up any and all of that uh, that you would like I know the Lord will bless you for it let's clap our hands as Brother Crump comes back tonight alright enjoyed the service tonight praise God I have amen real good all right, before we go, I want the president to come up and say a word. She was practically born and raised here in this church, and then when she got of age, she moved to Cleveland, Tennessee, and I won't tell you how long she's been up there because you'll know how old she is. <laughs> but today is her birthday, and we appreciate having her here. We just want her to say a word uh, to you before we go, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer. 
Well, I guess everybody's ready to go home, but uh, like Brother David said, I was born and raised here in Hickory, and this was my home church. I got uh, saved here at the church, and then we went to one of Brother Hall's tent revivals down in Gastonia, North Carolina, and Brother David got the Holy Ghost, and Brother Hall said, if you get the Holy Ghost tonight, said, I'll come to your church for revival. So he came to our church for revival about three days, I believe it was, and then I got the Holy Ghost in that in that revival and that's and that's history and I just thank God that he put me in this ministry and I thank the people for standing with us we got so many people all over the world that's standing with us with their tithes and offerings and with their prayers and you know I, I just never thought that I would be here doing this but you know God puts you where he wants you you know I know I work with Brother Hall and I work with Brother Don and Sister Hall and you know they just gave their life for this ministry so that's what I want to do is just keep this ministry going just the way that they wanted it to go and I know the people are standing with us and I just thank y'all for coming tonight and I love every one of you praise the Lord and happy birthday one more time today Yeah, happy birthday. That's good. All right, we appreciate everyone being here tonight. Remember tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Sorry no more of our people showed up, but that's the way they are. <laughs> They're disobedient sheep. But anyway, we love you and love them too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we dismiss. Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord, and your blessings. Thank you for the service this evening, the preaching of your word, the song, the music. Everything's been said and done here tonight. Lord, appreciate these people, these preachers that's come to help us, Lord. We thank you for them. Pray that your hand of blessing ever be upon